It's Carter Sports back and I'm going back to the semifinal. And we gonna talk about this Texas versus Washington game in the Sugar Bowl. Carter Sports, let's go. And well, oh well, what do you know? A Pac-12 team going to the Natty in their final season. Who would have thought it, huh? Washington versus Texas, another good game, another ball burner. Had you on the edge of your seat. Michael Penix, we gonna get into Michael Penix in a minute, but it was a great game. Down to the wire. Let's get, I'm gonna get into the numbers, run y'all the stats, then we gonna dig up into it. Penix for Washington was 29 for 38. 430 yards, two tutties, no INTs. Dylan Johnson rushed for 49 yards. Only 2.3 a carry, but he had two tutties though. Rodgers had five carries for 19 yards. The receiver, Odunze, had six catches for 125 yards, averaging 20.8 a catch. Pope, five receptions, averaging 24.4 with the tutty. McMillan, five catches, 58 yards with the tutty. Bernard, three catches, 48 yards. Dylan Johnson, three catches, 18 yards. Quinn Ewers did his thing low key too, especially at the end. Was 24 for 43, not efficient. One tutty, no picks though. Baxter had 64 yards rushing. Blue had 59. Ewers, you know, showed his mobility. He had 54 yards, eight carries. Sanders rushed for 75 yards. No, receiving. Sanders had 75 yards receiving for six catches. Winnington, four catches. Blue, four catches. Worley didn't get off like I thought he could have. Mitchell, I, I expected more from Texas receivers, so we're going to get into that too. So from the get, from the get-go, I knew this was going to be a barn burner. I knew this was going to go up. So after the first couple of possessions in the first couple of minutes in the game, the first thing I'm noticing is okay, hold on. Washington cannot stop Texas rug game. They can't stop their rug game. They'll open it up holes. And then I'm thinking, okay, Texas can't stop Washington pass game because nobody can. Washington came out, I remember, what, they went down the field in like three plays, four plays, scored a tutty. Like, oh, okay, Washington gonna do what Washington gonna do. See, Texas had never seen a passing attack like that in the country. So immediately out of the first quarter, I already seen, okay, Washington look like they gonna eat in the pass game, and Texas look like they gonna eat in the run game. But I'm thinking in my mind that Texas coach is Steve Sarkeesian. Steve Sarkeesian, I know Sark. I'm a USC fan, I know Sark. So I'm like, I gotta get the, the, the edge to Washington in this kind of matchup because Sarkeesian, he almost like Lincoln. I mean, let's keep it real, he can't help but throw it. He can't help but throw the ball. At one point in the game, Texas was averaging like eight or nine yards a carry. But look at the final stat. You, you were through the ball 43 times. Penix only threw the ball 38 times and they passing game was humming. Washington passing game was humming, but Penix still only threw a 38. Texas passing game wasn't humming. They run game was humming. So how did Ewers end up throwing the ball more than Penix? When Texas run game was doing their thing. But I was, the run plays I'm looking at, I mean, I was worried about Washington. Like, oh, we can't stop this run. But in the back of my mind, I knew Steve Sarkeesian was going to try to keep up with the light show with Penix. I know Steve Sarkeesian can't help but trying to fling the ball around. Steve Carkeesian is to me another Josh McDaniel. He should just be an offensive coordinator, not a head coach. He needs somebody over him to put him in check. He want that shine. He want that glory as a play caller. See, a 
play caller like Steve Sarkeesian look better if they quarterback throw for four or five touchdowns and all these yards because you could toot your horn and be like, look, look at me dialing up these plays. Look at me dialing up these plays, you know? So offensive coordinator get credit and more shine if the passing game elite instead of just the good old running game. So I felt like Texas would have won that game if they just would have pounded the ball. But in the back of my mind, I said, I know they can't help but throw the ball because they coach is Sarkeesian. So I know he in love with the pass game. And Ewers is a capable quarterback. But let's keep it real. The Washington DBs had Mitchell and Worthy on lock for three and a half quarters. You know what I'm saying? They had them on lock, but they running the game was sweet. Like, so I was like, man, this game going to be crazy. So, and that it was, it got even more crazy at the end. Like what was Washington doing? What was Washington doing at the end of the game? It was like, they was trying to get a game to Texas. It was like, they were trying to get a game to Texas. Couldn't even run out the clock, but Dylan Johnson did get hurt, so that stopped the clock. But I heard the referees, I could have swore the referee said it's supposed to be a, still a 10 second runoff, or no, nah, no, nah, they declined that. I don't know what happened. I forget. I don't, uh, yeah, it was something to where it could have been a 10, 10 second runoff, but the decision on the 10 second runoff was on the, on the defensive team for the end. That's a weird rule because they was like, oh, the 10 second runoff declined by Texas. I'm like, why is it even in Texas hands to decline the 10 second runoff? So anybody that's watching this video that's a college football expert on the rules, let me know. Explain that to me. I couldn't understand. But early in the game, Washington muffed the punt. They could have went up 21-7. Dude muffed the punt. Then it was 14-14. Then after they couldn't run the clock out, they kick the ball and get past uh, interference on, on the punt return, uh, returner interference. I'm like, what is going on? Then all of a sudden they start giving up bombs. So I'm sitting there talking with my folks. It's like, why at the end of a game when it's desperate in it's desperate moments, it almost seemed like the offense get the better of the defense to a certain extent. Like, the whole game, you struggling to get downfield, going downfield, and then at the end of the game, you could be downfield in two or three seconds. Ewers turned into Penix that last drive. I'm like, what? I'm sitting here watching. I'm like, I know Washington is not going to collapse like this, but it was crazy because that injury really just changed everything. That injury just really changed everything with the clock management. It looked like it was all in the cards for Texas. It was like I, we were seeing it coming. We were seeing it coming. Then, when it was five seconds left, you were scrambled, get sacked, throw the ball out, the, out of bounds. The clock hit tri triple zero. They put a second back on the clock. I'm watching this game like this is crazy. I'm thinking it's like Texas is going to do another miracle. Is this going to be like a Vince Young thing all over again? I seen VY at the game. I'm like, wow. I thought Texas was really going to do it. And shout out to Texas, man. They got hard because Washington is a better team than Texas. It, it is, but Texas could have won that. And I say Washington the better team because they at least was the better team that night. When it was uh 14-14 or 14-10, whatever the score was, it should have been 21-7. Should have been 21-7. They and then they defense was doing better than it looked. But Ewers, when nobody be open, he'll scramble for a big run. That's why Ewers had like 50 yards rushing. So it was a weird but an exciting game. And all I kept thinking is gonna go down to the Texas run game versus Washington pass game, but I knew Sarkeesian wasn't going to fully utilize the Texas pass game. So I'm like, Washington going to win this. Watch. I'm like, Washington going to win. I'm telling my friends and family, like, Washington going to win because Sarkeesian, he going to throw the ball when he should be running. 
it was clear to see to me after the first quarter if Texas fans y'all in here what y'all think Texas I thought y'all run great I thought y'all should have ran way more I thought Washington never really fully figured out stopping the run game of course it was some plays of no gains and short yardage but y'all one game was looking unstoppable to me but when you got a offensive mind play Carter like Sarkeesian like to run the spread West Coast you know he he liked the pass he's pass oriented when they run the ball and it's only four or five yards, a coach like Steve Sarkis don't even look at that as positive. You know what I'm saying? But in hindsight, or just football, normal football IQ, four or five yards on first down run, that's good. You ain't behind the sticks. Two four-yard runs, that's third and two. Before offensive coordinator like Star Sarkeesian, the run ain't don't look that good unless it's busted for 15, 20, 30 yards. It was one possession where Texas just ran the ball down the field on Washington. Easy. Right? Then, the next possession, Sarkeesian passed the ball three times, don't even run it once. That was a wasted possession right there. You just ran up and down the field. They couldn't stop your run. And when you drop back the pass, they couldn't stop your quarterback from scrambling. Only thing Washington was doing right in the beginning was locking down them receivers. Just like the uh, announcer said when one of them caught a ball, like, okay, one of them got out of the witness protection program because the Washington DBs had the Texas wide receivers on lockdown. So why are you just still forcing to pass the ball when the run game you eating on the run game you just scored? That's like a turnover to me. That's a coaching turnover, a strategy turnover. Because you just ran the ball down the field in the next possession, you pass three times, don't even run it once, got a punt. And then when you passing it, that's the Washington strength. They got pass rushers like Bryce and good DBs. You want you playing into their strength. Just like Alabama played into the strength of Michigan when they tried to run it in overtime, Texas was playing to the strength of Washington, dropping it back and passing the ball. It's simple. But shout out to Texas. Shout out to Washington, man. Let's talk about this West Coast, man. Everybody picked Texas. It's only for one reason. Because everybody is geographical. Everybody's geographical. Nobody watch West Coast football. Texas, the bigger name. It's the South. This and that. That's the Pac-12. This and that. Y'all going to be wooly awakened, man. If y'all don't know about Washington. And I know I can't blame y'all. The Pac-12 network is a horrible network. We got a lot of games that's late at night. Y'all ain't get to see Washington. But let me let y'all know what animal y'all dealing with with Washington. And I'm going to get up out of here. Washington is a team that got a NFL level quarterback. NFL level coaching. NFL level wide receivers. And NFL level pass protection. So Washington can compete and whoop on anybody because they got the weapons in the offense to be unstoppable. They got a quarterback in the receiving core that's unstoppable. So all he needs is a protection. They offense a line is good at pass pro. So that's what this Alabama, I mean, excuse me, that's what this Washington and Michigan game going to come down to. I seen Michigan wrecking Alabama in the pass pro, wrecking Alabama pass pro. That's the only way they going to win Michigan against Washington unless they wrecking the best offensive line in the country. They won their award. That's the best offensive line in the country. I don't know about they run game, but I know they pass pro is definitely the best in the country. If Penix could sit back there and throw the ball, they go run down the field on Michigan too. Now Michigan, they physical, they can run the ball, which is I feel like that's the way to attack Washington. So Michigan is built to beat Washington, but Washington is built to beat Michigan at the same time. 
and how Michigan built, it don't matter if they can't sack Penix and get pressure on Penix. If they don't get pressure on Penix, he's going to do the same thing. He's going to do the same thing. Washington is getting 35 to 45 points. So Michigan, if you don't get to the quarterback, you're going to have to score that much. You gonna have to score that much But back to this game man Texas and Washington was a classic It almost was an ultimate choke job By Washington It was crazy But they put on The national championship It finna be all big 10 This is the future It's finna be all big Maybe this a turn of a new day Maybe this the end of the SEC dominance But we finna see We got two big teams And they officially big to me Cause this is the uh, This is the off season The regular season over so it's two Big Ten teams in the national championship. Is this where the future going? Ohio State, Oregon, USC. Y'all better catch up. Washington and Michigan is there. Penn State. The Big got a cold top six. So shout out to Washington, man. Shout out to Texas, man. I know the offensive linemen and the probably the running backs probably wish they could have got more active and did more run game. But man, shout out to Texas too. Y'all did y'all thing. Them boys was beast. Who number 90 on Texas before I go? It looked like he was playing both sides of the ball. Was that kid a fullback tight end slash defensive tackle? I need Texas fan to hop in the comment. Who number 90 that ran that touchdown? I could have swore I seen him on defense two and catch a pass. Who is that? So shout out to Texas, man. They got some boys over there. And Texas is going to be back next year. Yeah, they're going to be back. They're going to be back. They didn't have two nice recruiting classes, too. They're going to be back next year. Texas is going to have something to deal with. But Sarkeesian is going to have to grow. When your run game work with Sarkeesian. I said this thing thing about Lincoln Riley. Four yards on the run play, that's good. You look at Sarkeesian and people like that, Lincoln Roddy, you look at their face when the when the running back get a four-yard down, a four-yard gain, they be looking like they stressing, like, oh, like that was some BS. Like, nah, that's cool. Cause if you running for another four yards now, you third and two. Ain't the goal to stay ahead of the sticks. To avoid third and long. So Sarkeesian gotta grow. You got a great offensive line. They was looking good running the ball. So Texas is going to be back. They going to be a factor. College football looking nice for the future. That 12-team playoff going to be Liddy. It's going to be Liddy. And I can't wait. So we going to see Washington, Michigan. Y'all tell me who y'all got. And y'all tell me if y'all want me to do a review on that game after that game. But until then, it's Carter Sports. Salute to Texas. Salute to Washington. Congratulations. Washington. Boy, I would have banged for the Pac-12. You feel me? Let the Big Ten know y'all coming. The Pac-12 coming. Y'all you know I mean? So until then, let's go.